What's up guys, it's Yvonne. In this video, I want to take you from A to Z of setting up your Facebook pixel. So I will show you everything you need to know. Don't worry if you're afraid or confused about this, this pixel setup. It is very easy. I will show you literally everything you need to know. I will first tell you what a pixel is. I will help you set it up. I will tell you how to actually input this pixel into your audience. So if you're creating a remarketing list, I will show you how to do that. And fourth, uh, I will show you how to analyze the data and how to input those columns from the pixels that we've input. Now, if you want to skip to any particular section, uh, just look at the table of contents down below in the description. Uh, otherwise, I will take you from A to Z and we will start from new, start from scratch. So let me first tell you what a pixel is and what it looks like. Now, don't be concerned about this. It's just a Facebook code. You don't have to know it. But what I will do is I will take this URL and I will just post it here and as you can see right over there in the middle of the screen let me see 500 uh, percent is the maximum I can zoom in so there that is a pixel my friends that right there is a pixel so what a pixel is is it basically it's a little part of a page um, it's well it's a little image that you can input so you can track data. So for example, if you have a landing page and a thank you page, as we have in our example, the most basic case, how would I determine how many people passed the landing page? Well, I would put this pixel onto my thank you page, and the only way they can reach the thank you page is by signing up, right, from the lead page, from the, from the landing page. So after they sign up, the pixel on the thank you page will fire, and I will know that I had one person sign up. The same concept applies to anything, whether it's purchase, whether it's providing an email, whether it's checkout, whatever it is, you put this pixel onto a page, it fires when someone enters it, and again, how do they enter it? By completing the action of the page before that. So let me now show you how to actually set it up now that you know what it looks like. So let's go into part two. So here I'm in Ads Manager, I have this bogus little campaign we've been working on. Um, so let me go into uh, pixels, okay? So first thing we need to do is we need to go into pixels. Now, for your screen, if you're just starting off, you may have a little option there saying create pixel. Uh, I have two test ones I've, I've used to make sure it works. Uh, and it will say create pixel, click on it, create your name for the pixel. You can only have one and you cannot, cannot delete it. So make sure you're you're ready to start it. I mean, no big deal if it's there and you don't use it, not a problem, but you can delete it and you can only have one. So after you do that, you should see something like this, which will pop up. So let's go step by step. The first thing it's telling you is to install the pixel base code. So this is like the boss pixel code. Put this on every single one of your pages. Now, before you do that, select this little option, advanced matching. And what that does is, as you can see there, <clears throat> the difference it is, is it added that insert email variable option there and basically what that does is when people enter their email for example to sign up uh, Facebook will match that email with their database and they will be able to provide you more information on that client so t take advanced matching it doesn't hurt you it, it, it can only benefit you and then what you're going to do is copy this so just click it and put it onto every single one of your pages every one of your pages whatever you're doing whatever marketing you're doing just put it on every single one of them because this will make your future much easier, okay? So just put it onto every page. What I will do is here in ClickFunnels, I'm going to go into my settings and head to tracking code. So basically I put it on all my pages at once in this funnel. Uh, if you don't have such an option, I'm sure most of you do, but if you don't uh, and then click save, what you could do is you can go into each individual page that you have. So I'm not sure how, how WordPress, for example, functions or, or Wix or some of those other pages but you would go into tracking code and you would put the data right here in the header. Okay, so maybe put it right below. So if you have something there, put it right below down there. That's fine. I'm gonna delete that and that's it. Okay, we've done part one of the pixel setup. It's, it's that easy, that's it. So you just put this in the header and if you're lost, it will tell you, it says locate the header and put it in the header. Okay, that is it. This is the boss code we need to put it next. We have two options. One is we can install this event code. Two, we can install a custom a custom audience, a kind of a custom pixel. Now, if you put in this event code, you can only have 20 on your account and you cannot delete them. 
you cannot delete these event codes so what I will do is let me first show you how you can do the custom conversion first and then I'm, I'm going to go back and show you how to do this so again we have two options so let me click on either create conversion or I can go here all tools and custom conversions either one will do the exactly same thing so I'll click on create conversion I will click on track custom conversion so as you can see here it says track and optimize without adding anything to your Facebook code okay so for this one you can have 40 on your account and you can actually delete them anytime so pretty cool so what we need to do here is let's suppose we want to put <clears throat> our pixel on the thank you page to of course measure how many people subscribe successfully right alternatively we can put it on the landing page to see how many people actually went to the page so we can remarket to them later on but let's suppose we're doing this first because we want to see data on how many people subscribe so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it into this url contains field and what I'll do is I'll delete that HTTPS or www. So I will just put in the core site name, just, you know, yourdomain.com slash whatever. Don't put www, don't put HTTP. Reason for that is you don't know what people may type in when they search for you. They may type in HTTPS. They may type in www. Why risk it? Just put this thing in. As long as your URL contains that, you should be fine. You should be good to go the pixel should fire there's no need to say specifically www because you don't know if people are going to type that okay so just type that in select the category so in our case it's a lead right people subscribed we now have their email well in in, in my case in particular for this funnel i just have a sign-in page and then a thank you page so i'm going to click lead for you if it's an add to cart page and they're taken to the order form maybe you can say add to cart or purchase if they've made the purchase right whatever it is you want to view content if they just looked at your site so let's click lead here and now we can create a name so let's say uh you know thank you page lead maybe whatever it is whatever promotion you're doing uh so maybe i mean in our case we're doing diabetes loophole maybe let's say diabetes loophole leads right and then we could put a conversion value. This is especially useful if you're if you have a uh, purchase. So you would put in whatever it is. I normally still put in like one dollar just in case you know for some reason uh, my conversion doesn't say one. Like it it do doesn't specify for some reason that hey there was a conversion. I will at least be able to rely on the value and say hey there was this one conversion here basically right. But given that you don't have to put anything in. So let's click create. And it says we've now created the custom conversion. So let's go back here and let's go into custom conversions. Like I said, you could use this and you can just say create custom conversion. There's same thing. So here it says no activity yet. So we haven't received activity. We don't know if it's working or not. So let's go into back into our funnel. So that's this one. That's the same funnel I posted into in non-incognito window. But let me say I could do it from here as well. So let me just open the page. And by the way, yeah, this is the thank you page. The other one was a landing page. So now it should have fired, right? Now the, the pixel should have worked and said, hey, this website, which we specified, was accessed. The pixel should fire. So let's let's confirm that. So I'm just going to refresh the page. And boom, it says active. Okay, so it is working now. You're good to go. The category lead. So I will tell you how to read this data later on, how to analyze that, hey, this person subscribed. Okay, but first, let me tell you the second option you could do. Really, there's not much difference. The only difference I could think of is maybe uh, the event tracking may be slightly more accurate because you're actually putting the pixel code in there. And for this one, you're putting a URL. So, I mean, it's possible later on down the road, if you have a URL that um, that is similar, maybe you'll have marketing sites that, that says thank you too, then this one will unfortunately also match and fire when someone types in, you know, marketing says that site thank you too, right? Because it contains that. So just, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go back into pixels and let me show you the second option. Like I said, the one that you can't delete, which is why I'm showing it second. So you can see the other. So we would need to go into... So we said, you know, we said we've already done that. So here's the event code. This is the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of putting the URL, we're going to input the actual code <coughs> inside of our website. Pretty, pretty much similar uh, options here, though. And I mean, they are exactly the same. So you have search, 
you have view content, you have add to cart, and it tells you what they are. So if you're not sure what you know add to wish list means, you can just say the add to wish list event should be triggered when a person adds or saves an item. Okay, so this will trigger and this will show when they save a particular item. So you would put it on that saving page, right? To trigger. Now you do have three options here at the top. You have the basic, the recommended, and the advanced. The basic one just counts that item. So hey, someone was added to wish list. Hey, someone purchased. Hey, someone made a lead, right? So as you can see here, there's no value. If you want to go a little bit in depth, you can actually, for example, here I'm going to recommend it. You can add the value. So in, not only did they purchase, but they purchased in 250 you know, American dollars. Now, if you want to go one step further, it may not show for purchase. I think it's going to show for add to cart. The difference would be here, advanced. So this advanced does not show for, for every case. Sorry about that. This advanced does not show for every case. So if I go to initiate checkout, the advanced and recommended would be exactly the same because they're just initiating checkout. There's no really, no values. But like I mentioned for add to cart, here you can actually specify the exact maybe product type and maybe the exact product ID. So it's a it's a vase that's colored red or it's a vase that's colored pink, right? And you would be able to, with your values that you would know, your IDs for those products, you would input them here. Um, I'm just going to use basic for the purpose of this example, but all you have to do if you're using the, the recommended or advanced is just literally change the values that they give you. So instead of 350, delete 350, put in 450, put in 10 bucks, 20 bucks, right? That's all you have to do. So I will use this and I will use the lead. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to copy that Let me just close that page out, go back into here, go back into edit page. Now it tells you what to do. So after you copy that code, it tells you not to insert it inside of the head tag. So you can use either the footer or the body. That's fine. Both work for me. Let's go into tracking. So don't put it in here. That's Google code. Let's put it in there. Be like that. So I'm going to say leads. I'm going to say save and preview. And so let's, let's, uh, so after you do that, that's something else not sure what that is uh we need to check the pixel status uh, so let's see so i'm not going to email instructions i'm going to close it so it should basically show that it's firing right so let me just refresh that page leads one here okay so i had to pause the video for a bit there um there seemed to be a little delay and actually on the message there it said we're we're still installing your your pixel we're in the process so don't worry if it doesn't show up immediately uh, but as you can see here, I've tried different ones and um, they all showed up all at once. But let me now show you two more things. Let me show you how you can actually read the data and how you can use the data and put it into your audience list. Okay, so we can do this with custom conversions. So I'm going to head over here into ad sets. going to edit and I will click on custom audience. And over here under custom audience, you should have an audience set up now in this case i don't because there's there's no one there I, I have zero people so far visiting my page but i think the minimum is like 50 or 100 uh, and after that you can start using them as custom audience and you can plug them in and you can target those people so maybe in our example uh, for custom conversions we said leads but what you could do is you could also do view content so people that visited your page and then you can just remarket them only here all right so this is where you would do it custom audiences, they would show up here as soon as you get more than, you know, that zero that I have there uh, for, for my lead so far. So that's that. Now, if you want to analyze your data and you want to actually see the results of those conversions, we would need to go into ads manager and you can take a look at the video, by the way, about the difference between ads and ads manager and power editor to see exactly which one you should use, but we will be using ads manager for tracking. So when you go into Ads Manager, go into Performance here and scroll down to Website. And over here, as you can see, it talks about the pixels, right? So here's the, the event pixels that we've set up. These are the ones that are not custom, the ones that are were just there available. So this is how many of those events happened. This is the cost per event. So they you know uh, divide the clicks by the number of events to see the cost for each one and the value, how much is it worth to you. And then when you scroll down here, here's the website conversions. So here's the custom ones. So here's the custom conversions. And 
same thing here. So the diabetes loophole leads, the cost, and the value. I, I prefer doing custom conversions because I can see what it is and I can name it whatever I want to. For the events one, they kind of give you the only things that, that you can use, okay, and that, that you can put. That's, I think, about it. I don't think there's anything else you really need to know about Facebook Pixels. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.